Hello, everybody. Rob Grosso here again. And today we're doing a very special uh, video. This one's going to be a little bit longer than the previous ones we posted because it's tackling a different subject that takes a little time to explain, but it is still related to all of our goal setting. And it's asking a very important question. What happens when we don't achieve our goals? Because believe it or not, despite everything that I've said, sometimes we won't be able to achieve or accomplish what we set out to do. And there may be many factors into that. You know, why don't we reach our goals? Well, sometimes it could be about the expectations we put on ourselves. Um, maybe they're too impossible or they're too lofty uh, at first. You know, as we talked about several times, like we want to go for like a 90 average in school, but maybe that is too high to do in one semester. Maybe it'll take half a year. Maybe it'll take uh, th uh, three marking periods or whatever, how long it takes. We want to lose 25 pounds in the gym in a month. Maybe that is putting an impossible expectation on us. Maybe we can only lose 10 pounds in a month, whatever that case may be. And I've talked about this before, how we can build up to uh, achieving our goals in this way. But sometimes the expectations we put on ourselves uh, are a big reason why we never fully reach our goals. Another possibility is that our goals are just too vague. You know, remember the SMART method. We want to be as specific as possible with our goals. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is we aren't. We're just going to get good grades this semester. We're just going to go to the gym and lose weight. That's too vague. You know, if you lose like two, three pounds, you can get frustrated at that. If your grade goes up by like a point, sure that you're getting better grades, but you know, that's not progress. At least we don't see that as progress. That's something to keep in mind. We also tend to think about our goals in negative terms. We're very pessimistic. We're very cynical to use some big words here as to what our goals are and how we can achieve them. Oh, I will, you know, I probably not, I'm probably not going to get a 90 for this semester, but I'm going to try anyway. Oh, I'm probably not going to go to the gym um, to lose weight, but, you know, maybe I'll go once and we'll see what happens. You know, when we frame our goals and when we frame our outlook in a negative way, it just sort of reinforces the point on everything. It reinforces the fact that we are looking at our goals in negative terms and the outcome we will achieve will also be a negative as well. And the outcome we will achieve will also become negative in the long run. Another problem is the lack of motivation for goals. That's a very simple self-explanatory. We just aren't motivated. We're not engaged in what we're trying to do with the goals anymore don't want to do them anymore. Maybe it's setbacks we were dealing with, or maybe there's something else that is bothering us. That's what can happen with these type of goals. That's what can happen with these types of problems. This is why it's sometimes hard to reach our goals. Finally, our goals rely way too much on others. Maybe we are getting help from friends, but maybe that help can only go so far. You know, they're helping us study once a week, but we need them twice a week, three times a week, and they don't have that time. We have a friend who's going to the gym with us every other day, but they had to stop going because they hurt themselves, and now we don't have any motivation to go ourselves. Having others helping you on your goals is a good thing, but when we are overly relying on them, that is when it becomes a problem. So we need to be careful about that. And with that all said, now it's time for the key part. We need to welcome failure. Didn't probably didn't expect me to say that, but it's really true. Failure is normal. Keep that in mind. It's part of our entire um, journey as we go through and try to accomplish our goals. And it is something that you will experience no matter what happens. And there's this great acronym regarding failure. F-A-I-L, first attempt in learning. Fail, first attempt in learning. 
Sometimes failing is how you can achieve success. It is your first attempt at trying to do something. Maybe you mess it up. It's okay though. It's perfectly normal. And that's how you learn from it. You can learn from failure. Learn from your mistakes. Because one thing that failure is, it is always temporary. How you actually manage yourself when it comes to you is what truly matters in regards to failure. It's also important to point out that you should never fail once either. Because those who fail once and don't try again are the ones that actually stay down. They're the ones that never can accomplish their goals, never can achieve success in the way that they hope to. This is a very important point. If you fail, it sucks, it hurts, but it's temporary. It is our choice to make that permanent. So don't just stay down. Get up and try again. You've probably heard that hundreds of times. And it's true. You may fail hundreds of times until you get it right. But the fact that you got up to still get it right is what's important here. Think of it in a way where there's no absolutes to anything. Failure is kind of like a sliding scale. It is degrees of how you failed. So let's take that um, school example again. You know, you're, you're aiming for that 90 on your marking period. You have a 75 normally. You get an 80 for the marking period. Did you fail? No, you didn't. You maybe failed at achieving your primary goal of getting a 90, but you bumped your grade from a 75 to an 80. So the degree of failure you actually achieved here is much smaller if you look at it in, an, in a way where you have improved yourself and you can continue to improve yourself. You didn't reach your goal, but you didn't do worse than what you were at now. You did better. Next step would then be to try and work at reaching your goal for the next semester. Maybe bump it to an 85 or bump it to a 90. It's possible. It's, again, a way on how we can measure our own success. Another key point to this is how open-minded we are. You know, ask yourself um, some questions uh, to help you understand why your goals fell short. In a way, this is a good self-reflection. This can help you understand why you failed, so you can bounce back from that failure. You just have to be brutally honest with the questions you ask yourself. And some examples, um, did you give your goals enough time to be completed? Did you make a real effort to reach your goals? Did you misjudge how attainable your goals are? Did you procrastinate? You know, all of these questions are the types of questions you need to be brutally honest with. So, did you give your goals enough time to be completed? If you tried to get that 90 average for this marking period, you know, three weeks before the marking period ended, okay, maybe I didn't give myself enough time for the goals to be completed. Did you make a real effort to reach your goals? Did you study every night for that 90 average? Or did you only study um, the day before a test? Or the day before homework was due? Did you procrastinate? Did you wait to the last minute for that studying? Um, did you do your homeworks in the morning really quick before you handed them to your teachers? Did you misjudge how attainable your goals would be? It is cases like that where the answers, if you're honest with yourself, might be surprising. They also might be disheartening and to you as well because you're like, oh, damn it, I didn't do my job. I didn't accomplish what I wanted. I, you know, gave half measures here. But at the end of the day, that's okay. If you're honest with yourself, you can always bounce back from failure. Remember what I said before. Those who attempt and fail once are the ones that will never succeed. It's now time to get back up and give it another shot. And keep that feedback in mind because 
it's all part of a learning process to help you achieve your goals. You know, the learning process is really simple. Asking questions is how you learn from mistakes. This helps you in rethinking how to approach your goals. Think it's almost like a problem you have to solve. And this can help you with a new perspective for success. If you continue to do what you're doing right now to achieve your goals, will you get the results you want? Will you be able to reach your goals? That's the type of questions you can ask yourself. Is this how successful and extraordinary people achieve your goals? Are your actions sufficient enough to generate the result you want to achieve your goals? Remember, it's a pro problem solving exercise. We've talked about this before. We can define what our goals are. We can assess what our goal, how we can achieve our goals. We can put our goals into action. We can learn from the results. And at the end of the day, readjusting how we um, focus our goals is how we also can aim for new goals. It allows us to adjust our aim. And there's really, um, it's really that simple. Learning from our mistakes, learning from our failures is the key here. Getting back up to try again and try something new, which is very important here, to try something new is one of the keys to making sure that we can actually hit our target and achieve our goals in hitting the reset button. Rebooting and resetting is not quitting. If we reboot ourselves, if we reset our goals, you are not giving up on your goals. You are not quitting. What you are doing is you are readjusting your goals. Remember that. Because sometimes you do need to reboot and reset your plans. You know, this could be as simple as taking a quick break. If you had a rough day, you know, you should rest and recharge. We've all done that before. Bad day at work, bad day at school, maybe, you know, like everything was going wrong for you. You know, you have stuff you have to take care of, but you know what? But you can't. You're not in the right mindset. So you rest, you recharge, you do something you like doing for fun, read a book, play a game, watch some TV, you know, something simple, mundane. That's resting and recharging. That is a reboot in a lot of ways. We can do the same thing with our goals. Maybe we set a new goal or we extend the time frame to achieve our current goals. That's a reboot, that's a reset. So, for example, that 90 for the marking period average, okay, we can't hit that. What if we set it down to 85? Maybe we can hit that. Or, instead of doing it in this marking period, within the next two marking periods, we can work up to get to a 90. That's changing the time frame, extending it or setting a new goal for ourselves that is in line with what we want to accomplish. A lot of this is very dependent on our own self-reflection too. So again, the more honest we are with ourselves, with the questions we ask, you know, the more we analyze our own personal shortcomings, the more likely we will have the power to reset our goals and aim for a new goal that we can accomplish. At the end of the day, that is the big key point. We can reframe our goals, reset everything. Remember, the reasons we don't reach our goals are, you know, varied. Sometimes life gets in the way. You know, if we want to go to the gym like three times a week, but, you know, we have to take care of a test, you know, we have a new part-time job, uh, we have to take care of our siblings or our parents, um, we got a date, you know, things get in the way from going to the gym. Finding the time to do it becomes harder and harder. If we want to achieve that 90 in our marking period, it becomes harder and harder if we're spending less time studying because of those part-time jobs, because of soccer practice because of a birthday party, you know, whatever the reasons may be. 
It could also be simply because we are thinking about our goals negatively. It could also be because we're being too vague on what our goals should be. But failure doesn't define you. If you fail right now, it doesn't mean you will fail again in the future. Your current situation does not define you. It is just where you are at the moment. There's this great quote by Samuel Beckett where he says, Fail, fail again, fail better. Failure is normal. It's perfectly fine. But it will never define you as a person. People fall off their goals a lot sometimes because they forget goals take time. It is part of the process of trying to achieve and accomplish your goals. This, you ever hear the saying, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day? This is applies here. Goals aren't accomplished in a day, unless they are very specific short-term goals. Many goals that we try to achieve, many of the examples I've given throughout the entire presentation today, are indicative of that. It will take time to get better grades. It will take time to advance into a career. It will take time to maybe purchase something like a car. But the fact of the matter is, that's part of the process. Failing to do it today doesn't mean you'll fail to do it three months from now, two months from now, six months from now, however long it takes. In the end, failure does not define you. Always self-reflect, learn from your mistakes, get back up and try again if you fail to achieve your goals. And if you need to, reset and change the parameters. I hope this has been very helpful for you. Thank you so much for listening. And have a good day. See you next time.